Um, parts. Which parts? Yeah. Because in the contradicting the truth, we leave it behind. So what do we know is the truth? Now, in Islam, we believe Allah created us upon fitrah, which means a natural inclination to know what's right and wrong. Yeah. So then, when we do a little bit of full exercise, when we think about it, we'll be able to come to the right decision. For example, is there one creator or multiple creators? Because you've already passed the first hurdle, which is there is a creator. Being an atheist is unnatural. Because, and I like to use the analogy that there's no atheist on a sinking ship. You like that, yeah? <laughs> there you go. And then once Allah gets them out of that calamity, they go back to the disbelief. Or before they say, like, oh, um, if you exist and I'm going to change, you're going to do this. And then the Av is like, well, what I mean. So you pass the first order, you believe in a creator. Now, is it one creator or multiple creators? I'm not sure. It, uh, there has to be one to create more. Do you not feel? There's something. No, no, there, I agree there's something. And I believe that something is uniquely one. That something is alone with no partners, with no equals. There's nothing comparable or comparable to him. Um, this creator doesn't have offspring, nor was he born. He's uncreated. He's self-sustaining, eternal. He doesn't need anything from anyone. And what, like I said previously, he's uniquely one. Yeah, this is a four-line definition of Allah given in the Qur'an. Now you're thinking, this guy is speaking English, but he keeps using Arabic words like Allah. Shall I tell you why I don't use the word God? Because God linguistically is limited. God um, implies a gender. Yeah? So you have God, male, Goddess, female. God, you can add a S to it, make it plural. Yeah, when I say God to a Hindu person, they're going to think, yeah, something blue, elephant head, six arms. Yeah, madam, don't laugh, that's what they believe, no, sticks and statues, no. they're worshipping it, and I'm foreign from that. Some Christians will say, Jesus Christ is God, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm thinking to myself, there you go, there you go. There you go. Especially when you look at the geography of where he's from. Exactly. I'm saying God does not become a man. In the Bible it says God created the world in six days, rested on the seventh. I'm saying as a Muslim, God, Allah does not need to rest. So for me to have a conversation with you about God, I'd have to first undo all of these misconceptions you have. So I don't even use the word God, I'll go straight with Allah. Now Allah is um, giving us an understanding without society corrupting us on recognizing him. For example, when you look at the creation, there's too much design for there not to be a designer. Yeah? Allah uses the argument in the Quran that if there was multiple gods, multiple deities, then you wouldn't have so much peace they'll be fighting amongst themselves and then if you got one ultimate god then it defeats the purpose if you have a god that created all the other gods then the one that's the creator deserves to be worshipped and i'm saying that allah by um so if you had the ultimate that god that created other gods then the other gods are depending on the ultimate god so then they don't class as gods yeah. does that make sense yeah so is there one God or multiple gods? No, there's one, but I there you would go. say there's one. I agree with you. Submission. Islam says there's one. You have others that spread the word and they're beloved. If you get what I mean. I'm saying that, again, we need to be clear in regards to the definition of God. Whoever preaches the message of God isn't God. Whoever worships God doesn't become God. There you go. Yeah? And I'll be honest with you. With all due respect, the Bible, Jesus Christ spoke Aramaic. The disciples spoke Hebrew. 
yeah? And the oldest manuscript currently you have is the size of a credit card, which is in Greek, yeah? So now you have a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. And the Ethiopian Bible, which is older than the King James. There you go. So, the meaning got lost. So, out of love of for will. God... Of course it will, the because out of translation, you know, everything is going to change in one way or another. Yeah. There you go. So now, I'm inviting you to read and follow the religion taught in the Qur'an, the perfect unchanged scripture from Allah. Let me say that again. Perfect unchanged scripture from the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's a big claim. Where's my evidence? I need to provide evidence. Everything I'm going to say to you is objectively verifiable, ob objectively true. Yeah? Allah says in the Quran that Allah says in, so cute. Allah says in the Quran that is Quran is from Allah and Allah will preserve it and Allah has made it easy to remember. Now we have over 200 million individuals who have memorized the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot in the language it was revealed in Arabic. We've preserved the Arabic language by preserving the Qur'an. Yeah? Now, let's get a bit closer. Let's go to Birmingham University. Yeah? We have a carbon-dated Qur'an in Birmingham University. That's been tested and carbon-dated to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So when you get a chance and your children are watching this video, Google Qur'an Birmingham Manuscript you see that we have non-Muslim academics who are stating and verifying that, look, this has been carbon, this is in the life of the Prophet Muhammad. I find all, all types of religions, there's in, something interesting about all of them. Yeah. You know? Shall I tell you, because I think all religions have started with the truth. Does that make sense? But then it got changed. And my reasoning for this is, as a Muslim, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Moses, I believe in Abraham, I believe in Adam, all the way to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of these messengers of God. Allah chose men amongst men to articulate the message. Once they die, the message lives on through a book. When the book gets changed and corrupted, Allah sent another messenger. So that happened with Moses. Moses' message got changed, God sent Jesus. Jesus' message got changed, his scripture got changed, God sent the Prophet Muhammad because there's no more messages to come Allah has preserved the Quran so the Quran will never be changed because there's no more messages to come there's more and more revelation to come now this Quran has to meet really stringent rules and regulations where it has to be as applicable 1400 years ago to now and it has to be the same level of valid 1400 years from now. It's guidance for all of humanity. The Prophet Muhammad is an unlettered man. He couldn't read nor could he write. In the Quran, it's giving you rules in regards to divorce, business transactions, inheritance, um, warfare. Yeah? It's giving you a holistic, complete way of life. It's talking about science and embryology, getting it right. It's talking about history, getting it right yeah um, it's making prophecies it's getting it right so I'm saying to you how could it be from anyone other than an inspiration from God Allah how do you feel about what I'm saying it's very interesting I like to hear I like to hear things I really do so now madam crunch time yeah we're all gonna die. Yeah? Fact. No one did, disagrees with that. What did they say? Paying tax and dying. <laughs> Guaranteed. Now, where are you gonna go when you die? Heaven or hell? Hopefully not. I pray that Allah protects you from hell. Now, you need to meet some criteria to enter heaven. 
Now, how can a creator of the heavens and earth create a heaven and hell, but not give you clear guidance in regards to what you need to do to avoid hellfire? What you need to do to enter paradise? Going back to my perfect scripture. It gives you a perfect guidance. Now, say that again, madam. What should be in your heart? It was in your heart. We're all born upon that fitra to know God, that natural inclination to know what's right and wrong, but society changes us. Suddenly, bombing hospitals, yeah, bombing civilians, yeah, it's okay. It's, what did I say? Defending yourself. You're defending yourself by killing over um, 1,500 children. Does that make sense? Over, um, you have more modest um, calculations in regards to 3,000 or 4,000 civilians. So now, I read these quotes and I find it fascinating. You know, like in the time of Hitler, we will be like, no, nah, we wouldn't have done that. We all stood out against it. And then who's standing up for Palestine? Who's saying that, no, bringing our government to account saying that you cannot support this. Salaam alaikum. It's um, Salat time. Oh, Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Um, so, we're getting corrupted, we're getting um, wrong and right is getting blurred. So we need to go back. Money, power, um, oil, gases. There you go. So, thank you, by the way, madam. At least you have some shred of humanity. I don't actually like using the word humanity because we're all humans. I think you have some shred of a brain cell. There you go. You're, you're conscious enough to actually let the truth in. You're willing to be educated enough to actually say that, wait, I'm going to think critically about this. Because I think we're giving people a free, free pass by saying, oh, you're not um, lack of humanity. No, it's a lack of critical thinking. It's a lack of caring. It's a lack of actually challenging the status quo. It's a lack of coming out of your comfort zone to think to yourself, okay, um, I'm going to stand up for injustice and enjoying the good and forbid the evil, rather than saying it's not my problem. One day it will become your problem because injustice, when it's rampant like this, it's going to come local to our shores as well. Do you know what I mean? With the laws and the legislations that they're doing. But anyways, I digress. Let's go back to theology. So what, you said we should know what right and wrong is. I've just shown you very quickly that not all of us do. Yeah? So I'm saying that I'll let you get the phone, madam. They're like, I can see you on YouTube. No, it's not live. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> no, <you're good. laughs> As in, it's my favorite neighbor. We're going to speak later. We'll get back no, to you. Yeah, I don't. I'll bring it back in a minute. Yeah, he that's it. Rings me and I say to him, don't let me pick up, I'll call you back. This is on a pay as you go. Okay, so fair enough, that makes sense. Man. So, it's Monday, but I'll help out. <coughs> nah, that's very nice of you. So, um, we are not qualified to know what's right and wrong. So, we need to use, we're well, gonna have to wrap up this conversation, madam, to go to the mosque. But, um, what was I saying? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, that guidance um, in regards to going heaven and hell, yeah, we need to actually find it in a scripture from the creator of the heavens and earth. It's not man-made, it can't be man-made. Yeah? So I'm saying if you read the Quran, if you bring that into your life, even before you read the Quran, if you believe that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is a servant and messenger of Allah. And you affirm all of the messengers of God, Allah. You accept angels and you believe in Judgment Day. 
Yeah, you believe good and bad. The decree, um, destiny is from Allah. That belief will guarantee you paradise. Very simply put, is to testify that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and then I can guarantee you paradise when you die, as long as you die upon that belief, and then you read the Quran. Then you bring the Quran into your life. Then you bring the five pillars into your life. Because I don't think there's anything in Islam you disagree with. What stop you from reading it? I haven't read anything for a long time. I listen a lot on my phone to different people's views and stuff. Yeah. Who who you been listening to? All different people. It's all different. All different. I wouldn't even know names. I'm not very good at remembering people's names. No, that's fine. I would say that. There's a problem of too much information. We need to be selective in regards to the information. What you need and what's going to benefit you. Um, here we've had some debates. I don't want to debate. I want us to talk about the core things that's either going to take you to paradise or take you to hellfire. Does that make sense? I'm not here for an ego trip. Oh, look how smart I am. Look at what I can quote. Oh, um, da da da. No. So now, madam, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim? Because at the moment, you have no belief. But um, do you believe the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, of Allah? Yeah, I believe there's more than one as well. Yeah? yeah. No, so we believe the Prophet Muhammad. Um, there's no um, Jesus was a messenger of God. Because, again, in John 17, 3, he said, for eternal life. So for paradise, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In Mark, oh, I need to get the reference. I should know this because I reference this so often, right? You're trying to still so much you can't remember it all. No, uh, because I feel like I need to spend more time memorizing my own scripture. But a lot of the time I'm speaking to Christians. So now it's Mark 12, 29. Where Jesus Christ was asked, what's the greatest of all commandments? He replied, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Worship him with all your heart and all your might and love your brother like you love yourself. So the first commandment is, your Lord is one. Moses, he taught the Ten Commandments. He said, um, the Lord is one, don't make no images, worship him alone. What did the Prophet Muhammad say? Um, La ilaha illallah. There's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Yeah. Jesus, he spoke Aramaic. Um, the word for God in Aramaic is Ilah. Ilah, Allah, root words. Similarly, Moses. Yeah. So, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits their will to Allah and is guaranteed paradise? Are you ready and willing to take the step to submit your will to the creator of the heavens and earth because Abraham prayed to God, to Allah and said, Oh God, make my children submitters to you. If I was to translate one of those words into Arabic, it would be, Oh God, make my children Muslim. Muslim means someone who submits to God. I could be here wearing tight clothes, yeah, showing off my haircuts, yeah, but I've chosen to dress modestly. Yeah, man, you're shocked, like, like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, why? Because Allah wants us to dress modestly. Yeah. Um, Allah wants us to be kind to our parents. Allah wants us to give charity. Yeah. Allah wants us to do things within the remit of marriage. That makes sense. And you see statistically. Um, that's how you have the best impact on this community and society. Does that make sense? Um, when you look at, with all due respect to single mothers, as well as single fathers, yeah, statistically speaking, you're going to have more, um, they're more prone to learning difficulties. They're more prone to going through the criminal justice service and ending up in jail. 70% are sing from single parent households. Yeah. So Islam is giving you the solutions. You know what I'm saying about the... 
father and mother, you need it. Yeah. You, that balance gonna, yeah, that they bring. you're going to be looking for it all your life. There you go. Um, I was going to tell you about the five pillars, right? Um, first one is a testimony of faith that enters you into paradise. Then it's praying five times a day. Yeah. Then it's giving zakat. Zakat is a mandatory charity where you give 2.5% of your wealth in, to the poor. It's a tax for the rich to give to the poor. We eradicate poverty. There's no more poor people. Then you've got um, fasting in the month of Ramadan, which we're in now. Yeah. And then doing the holy pilgrimage of Hajj. Yeah. Um, the Kaaba was actually built by Abraham and his son and his children. Yeah. Yeah. So, that being said, madam, do you disagree with the five pillars? Yeah? Because this thing is like, look, belief, testimony, because there's no point saying um, you love your mom without saying it or having it in your heart. And then, where's the actions of the limbs? I love my mom, but I hate my mom. Like, physically. It doesn't make sense. Um, I love my mom in my heart, but I don't say it. I mean, I like to come home, tell my mom I love her, kiss her on the forehead. That means she needs to feel loved. Yeah? You're um, Similarly, in Islam, believing in a creator is not sufficient. You need to believe in Allah, testify with your tongue, have the belief in your heart. And then that's sufficient for you to enter paradise. Then you take it to the next level of actions of the limbs, praying five times a day. When I'm praying five times a day, when am I going to commit adultery? When am I going to commit murder? I wake up, I pray. M middle of the afternoon, I pray. Midday, I pray. Before the sun sets, I pray. In the night, I pray. Allah says that, look, it re um, protects you from shamelessness, from sinful behavior. So, what's your name, madam? Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Million dollar question. Oh, what? What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim, someone who's guaranteed paradise? Before I commit something, I was brought up Christian, and there's still a lot of similarities. Yeah, because there's a lot. The the problem becomes when with the contradictions, because we share Abraham, we share Moses, we even share Jesus. However, we don't believe Jesus is God. You don't believe Jesus is God. The Bible doesn't teach. Jesus is God. You have God and then you have messengers of God. You have God. Son of God. Son of God in what way? In how they say. How do you say? Well. Let me help you out, madam. Michelle. Uh, we're, we're beyond such formalities Michelle <laughs> um, all right right now the biblical understanding of son of God is whoever believes in God is a child of God the disciples are children of God um, David is referred to as begotten son of God yeah um, so, if you say son of God as in somebody who follows and worships God, then yes. But as Muslims, we avoid using words that would confuse the masses. So, number one. And we avoid using terms that hasn't been legis legislated by the creator of the heavens and earth. For example, when you say Jesus is son of God, People become confused and like, oh, he's part of God. Oh, he, he shares some divine attributes of God. I'm saying Muslims put the forehead to pray. Jesus put his forehead to the ground to pray. 
Jesus had a beard. I have a beard. Yeah. Um, I had long hair, but I went Umrah, I got rid of it. Yeah, I had long hair. It used to come below my shoulders. Funny enough, you know, everyone used to say, why is your hair so long? Yeah. And my response was, in an authentic hadith, statement of the Prophet Muhammad, we have a description of Jesus Christ. And his hair was beyond his shoulder blades. So everyone's like, your hair is too long. I'm like, I'm copying the example of Jesus Christ. His hair was between his shoulder blades. But I digress. Yeah. So, the Son of God as in someone who follows and submits to God? Yes. Son of God as in someone who shares attributes with God, equal with God? No. Because, alhamdulillah, I've been, it's the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. I've been reading the Quran more. And I find it beautiful. You know, the Quran refers to Jesus as the son of Mary. And Christians refer to Jesus as son of God. And by the way, notice the difference between son of God and God the son. Jesus Christ isn't God. He never claimed divinity. Now, so going back to that, if Jesus Christ is yeah, so does that answer your question? Yeah. So I would feel more It's all interesting. I would feel more comfortable to say Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. You know what I mean? Now, do I believe in Mary? Yes. Do I believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Do I have in Islam the Quran and chapter 19, an entire chapter named after Mary? Yes. Do I believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Is my elder son named um, Isa, translate Jesus? Yes. Is my younger son named Musa, translate Moses? Yes. Is my daughter named Sarah, translate Sarah, wife of Abraham? Yes. So the way I look at it is, it doesn't, like, I'm, I would argue I'm following the true teachings of Jesus Christ and I welcome you to follow the true teachings of Jesus Christ because it's nice for you to say I'm open-minded it's nice for you to say I like listening about different things it's nice to say wow I agree with everything you say it's amazing I want to look into other stuff what do you need to look into other stuff if the truth comes to you do not delay think of the reward you can get from fasting Think of the blessing you start receiving. Do you have family members who are Muslim? How did I know? And friends, how did I know? I could have asked you, I could have phrased it differently. I know you got family members who are Muslim. I know you have a strong network of Muslim friends. I know that you're open to Islam through this conversation, through um, a few things you've said, a few things you've shown me in this conversation. So, I would like you to be with them in paradise. The last thing I would want is for you guys to be like this in the dunya, in this world. And then you die and they're like, well, Michelle, you saw the finishing line. Michelle, you was at the finishing line. Michelle, you affirmed the finishing line. But Michelle, you didn't cross the finishing line. It's as simple as that, madam. Yeah? I would say, have you fasted that all this Ramadan? All right. That's good, because you wouldn't have got no reward anyways. <laughs> this is the truth, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because the fact of the matter is, you know, all these non-Muslims, they're like, I'm going to fast. Fast? But you're, you're going to um, learn discipline, yes. You're going to appreciate the food when you break your fast. Yes, I respect and I welcome you to do these things. However, the conditions of a good deed to be accepted, one of the conditions is um, belief. Does that make sense? The saddest thing is, look, you're a good person, Michelle. Your goodness, you'll be rewarded in this life. If you become Muslim, sorry, my mistake. When you become Muslim, yeah? Michelle, when you become Muslim, 
you get the benefits in this life and once you die you get the benefits hereafter you won't fall ill um, you will not grow old you, you will be able to taste these foods every um, morsel, every time you take a bite when you're chewing it, with every chew the flavour changes does it make sense? because the reality of it is you think this world is amazing yeah? the last person to enter paradise their paradise is going to be 10 times bigger than this world because it's nothing is impossible for Allah does it make sense? not only has Allah created this universe Allah sustains this universe Allah sustains the life on it talking human beings, talking insects, talking ants, talking animals yeah? Allah knows what's going to happen Allah knows what's not going to happen Allah knows that thing that did it did happen, what would have happened I feel like a preacher now <laughs> I need to calm down just relax I'm, feeling, I'm in the zone yeah? Alhamdulillah um, so look at this, look at them praying one of the blessings of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Muhammad is the entire world has been made a place of worship you can pray anywhere before those restrictions yeah? now, madam why do I say madam? Michelle my, my soon to be sister in Islam a lady of Jannah huh? madam makes me sound like a teacher so Michelle, what's stopping you? I see you getting emotional. No. <laughs> Hold back the tears. You can, you can start crying once you've said your shahada. Yeah? Michelle, at the moment, you've looked into a lot of things. Yeah? And Islam has stood out to be the truth. Yeah? There are things you've seen in other religions, other ways where it's like, ah. For example, reincarnation sounds good but then why is human population going up but crime rate is going up as well so if you're becoming humans reincarnated as a human when you behave good more people are behaving bad my question is how do you be a good stone how do you be a good cat <laughs> but let's not go there yeah. You're quite popular, ain't you? I'm, gonna, I'm not surprised, Michelle. Likeable person. They all call me Nan as well. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Respect. So. I love you. Oh, alhamdulillah. So, now, Michelle. You tell me, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who's guaranteed paradise? Is there anything? Is there anything I've said that I've, do you disagree with? What do you need to look into? Tell me. Look more in depth. Like what? what I take. Like what? Tell me. Just talk a bit. Like what? <laughs> Don't give me. A You're procrastinating, madam. No, I'm not. Can you guarantee me the next five minutes? No. Then, have you got time to look into it any further? I have to go. That's why I've just checked my time. Yeah, yeah. No, no, of course, of course, of course. Home, no, no, that's fine. No, no, that's fine. Um, saved by the bell, madam. I would suggest, Michelle, look into this matter. Set yourself a deadline. Set yourself a criteria. What do you need for Islam to be true? In fact, can I ask you that question now? What do you need for Islam to be true? Then how would you know if it's true or not? You need to know, madam. I need to stop calling you madam because it's a fault of habit. Go on, Michelle, because then you're going to be like, you're just going to be looking aimlessly. The way my criteria is, Allah says, Allah will preserve it. Quran is preserved. I'm going to give you Quran, by the way. Um, Allah says, if it was from anyone other than Allah, chapter 4, verse 82. If this was from anyone other than Allah, you'd find plenty of, um, you'd find contradictions in it. You'd find mistakes in it. So my criteria is, you can't have any mistakes. I'm even making the criteria even more difficult 
and it still passes the test, which is the Quran can't have any mistakes. The life of the Prophet Muhammad can't have any mistakes in regards to theology, in regards to um, purpose, in regards to um, behavior. My criteria is high. Islam meets my criteria. So what's your criteria? I would say you was born into Christianity. You've seen other religions. You've seen other manifestations of faiths. And Islam stands out to you to be true. You can't give me a reason not to become a Muslim. I've given you reasons to become Muslims. I'm worried for you, madam. That road looks dangerous. Have you seen how sometimes people just drive fast really fast? On that road. Yes. Do you know what I mean? No, and you're going to have to... Of course, when they shouldn't be. I don't understand why they do that. You don't value your life. <laughs> now, you got a lot of roads to get through before you get to your house. So I'm going to say to you one final time, madam. No pressure, but pressure. No pressure, but pressure. Yeah, because the way look at madam. Michelle, if you're not... If there's nothing you disagree with, You've seen them, you've seen people do it, you've got family members, none of them are complaining. None of them said, oh, my biggest regret is becoming Muslim. None of them are saying, oh, I regret praying. They get benefit from it. So, I would say, madam, do you believe that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth? Do you believe Allah is God? Okay, I would say, now that's fine. You need to go, I'm going to respect your need to go. Would you like another copy of the Quran? You got one, yeah? Brilliant. Read it. I would welcome you to visit and in fact, if you want, if you give me your number, I'll pass on your digits to revert to reality. It's an organization that supports not yet Muslims. <laughs> what? That's so funny. You like that, yeah? That's so funny. And they support new Muslims as well. So, yeah, you can take her number or I can yeah, pass on your number. Okie dokie. You're, you're, you're in demand, yeah? It's alright. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for being such an amazing listener. Shall I grab that for you? No, don't worry. I'll get it. I'll don't grab worry. it. No, it's alright. It's alright. No problem, madam. It's all right. No problem. No. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? So it's zero seven nine seven six eight zero seven two. Six eight. So this is like the business line, and it's called Revert to Reality. This is the logo. Revert to Reality. Yeah, they're based in Wolfestow. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, go go have some iftar with them. Free free grub. So not Wolf, it's our Leighton Storm, E10. Oh! Yeah, so they're in E10. Ah. On Lee Bridge Road. And yeah, so they've got a lot of good stuff happening. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me before I let you go, Michelle? No. You've been amazing, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. I pray, I pray you have a safe journey home. And you, and you continue having safe journeys until you become Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> then you can live it up and not look when you're crossing the road. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank Take you. care. Bye now. In fact, can I give you other leaflets? Sorry, I've got it. Um, I've got more. I've got a bag of leaflets um, there. 
I'll grab it for you, madam. Michelle, you're an absolute legend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Let me give her a bag of leaflets. <coughs> but, yeah, all right. So my, my beautiful assistant is there packing it. And yeah, so look, here's the references for um, Moses, Jesus, yeah. Muhammad. I've read this before when I've come past. Yeah, take a picture of it. And so you've got it. And look, we're literally I'm calling. Nearly every day. Oh, yeah. I'm really up the road. So then, so, in I've one week's phone. time. I just, because um, I've got a my phone, so I um, take It's good shop. to keep it moving, yeah. It's in shop, like, yeah. every few days. I would say that, look, um, I need an update from you next week, next Saturday. Get it, get it. You go, you go. But yeah. Yeah. I want to know what you've read, how much you've read. Um, the sister um, has already got a Quran. Do you want to take another Quran for a family member? Actually, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah? yeah that's a good idea. Do you, do you, I can give you more. I like you, Michelle. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you you're a double agent for me. <laughs> yeah, you can you propagate it as well. Thank, thank you so you much, Michelle. Much. You take care. Have it. a blessed day. You yeah. too. Bye now. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for Michelle. May Allah bless her with hidayat. Make dua for her. This is the best month. And yeah, make a donation to any charities that support Palestine. Yeah? Ummah Welfare Trust, One Nation, One Ummah. Asalaamu Alaikum. They're, all the charities I've mentioned, very trustworthy, and they are 100% um, donation policy. And plus, um, the Continuous Message Foundation, they're doing fundraising because they want to do a DAO organization center. So donate to them as well. And what you can do is scan this yeah, on your, on your screen yeah, with another phone. And then, yeah, alhamdulillah. So yeah, go, go on the website. Is it, have you launched the website? Come here physically, donate, and the link, I'll give you the link as well. Come, 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 Akhi. I'm, I'm trying to fundraise for Palestine and hear you, these are talking about Dao. But we need to support, the reality of it is, look, we need to support the Dao in the UK, and we need to support our brothers and sisters in Palestine and around, all around the world as well. So, Sadaqah does not decrease your wealth. So don't think like, oh, I'm just going to donate here. Donate everywhere, alhamdulillah. Yeah, um, going back to this link here, um, if you can scan this, right, and go to Launch Good uh, website, because what launch the Launch Good um, uh, account manager, they, yep. con they contacted us mm. and they said, in the last 10 days of the Ramadan, what they're doing is that you're automatically going to be put into this competition. And whoever raises raises the most in that day, one yeah. particular day for your charity, they will give five thousand dollars towards your campaign. Mashallah. So we need you brothers to go to this link, right? Scan this QR code. Go to the site and donate. check check what day it is. So then your your sadaqa, your donation will be multiplied, considering that on that day it would get doubled. And they're not actually judging how much the donation is it could just be something like three pounds one pound it's the amount of times so get your family members each to donate and whoever's got the most number of donations will get the price alhamdulillah yeah and go to uh, website continuousmessage.com yeah so if you go there you can get all the information about what we're trying to do alhamdulillah may Allah bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Alhamdulillah. <laughs>